let's uh, shift our focus a little bit. Look at the trade deadline. Coming up in three weeks, March 25th is the trade deadline. Now there's some, we've heard, we know Andre Drummond is definitely going to be a guy that's moved. We're starting to hear other names like uh, Jetty Osmond, potentially Torian Prince, and then JaVale mm -hmm. McGee. Which of those guys do you think has the most value? What do you think the Cavs could potentially get in return? And do you think one of those guys uh, potentially will be moved? This may sound strange, Dave, but but I think when you talk about um, what teams around the NBA are looking for and what they need, and given his contract, I think JaVale is going to be the easiest one for the Cavs to move. It's only a $4.2 million contract. It's an expiring deal. And there are a bunch of teams around the NBA, Toronto, Boston, Brooklyn, the Los Angeles Lakers, the Dallas Mavericks, the Miami Heat. All of those teams are looking for a big guy. Because if you think about the road in the Eastern Conference, it may have to go through Joel Embiid and the Philadelphia 76ers. If you think about the road in the Western Conference, it probably has to go through the Los Angeles Lakers and their big front court with Anthony Davis. So a lot of these teams are looking at it saying, okay, like we need more size. If you're a team like Brooklyn and the only center that you really have on the roster after trading away Jared Allen is DeAndre Jordan, you probably don't feel very comfortable about your interior presence. So I think that makes JaVale McGee a little bit more valuable than people realize. Aside from that, I mean, Jetty Osman has some value because his contract is very team friendly um, because he got off to a good start at the beginning of the season. And he's still really young, so a team could look at him saying, all right, well, if we bring him into our situation, into our system, maybe there's more that we can pull out of him. Um, in saying that, you know, none of those guys are really considered core pieces of the Cavs moving forward, and that's why you're going to continue to hear their name as opposed to, you know, Larry Nance Jr., Darius Garland, Isaac Okoro, Colin Sexton, Jared Allen, the guys that the Cavs have identified as core pieces. They have shown over the last couple of years, Dave, that they are willing to be aggressive in trades, but they have yet to break up any parts of their core. And that's something that I think people have to consider going into the trade deadline. When you look at, uh, at those pieces, is it, a, is it a young player that you get in return that maybe you like that you think fits what you're doing better? Is it a second round pick? I, I, would, I would find it hard to believe you'd get a first round pick for, for what you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, I think it's either a second round pick or multiple second round picks, depending on the protections attached to them, or it's a young ascending player that's not getting an opportunity where they are and maybe the Cavs feel like there's something that they can pull out of there. Um, I think if, if you're talking about any kind of deal for any of those kinds of guys, that's the kind of return that you could expect. In, in some ways, I think it may be similar to what the Cavs did with the Utah Jazz. If you remember, they got Dante Exum. They looked at him as a reclamation project. They also looked at him as a potential expiring contract. Like those are the kinds of deals that the Cavs would have to consider. And when it comes to Andre Drummond, look, Dave, the Cavs believe that they're going to be able to trade him. Uh, people around the NBA do not believe that the Cavs are <laughs> going to be able to trade him. People around the league believe that the Cavs are going to have to buy him out um, at some point after the trade deadline because his number is so high to reach in a potential trade and because um, he's a tough fit. I, I think we saw that throughout the course of the first half of this season. Uh, he's a big man who wants to play out on the perimeter at times. He's a big man who doesn't set screens very well. He's a big man that wants his post-up touches and he wants to do face-ups and things along those lines. So any team that, that tries to acquire Andre has to understand that they only have two months to try and figure it out with him on the fly. And, and he's a very, very difficult fit because of the style that he wants to play. Um, and I think that ties into it as well. The Cavs have no delusions of getting like a huge package for Andre Drummond. Uh, they know what they gave up in order to get him and they know if they're going to trade him, they're going to get some kind of package like that, expiring contracts and a future pick that has really no value um, because that's just the way that the rest of the NBA views Andre Drummond at this point.